All right, so here is the final video. And then even at this point, and in fact all the way to the end of the sculpt, we'll hop down to lower subdivisions to make big adjustments. This is the flatten 404 brush. Just uh, resolving some of the, the sculpting marks. Depending on the application, sometimes I like to leave a little bit of that stuff in there. I think it, it just kind of makes it feel like a piece of art. Obviously if it's going into a game or something, it needs to look like a hand and not uh, a clay sculpt, but you know, for just a personal studio project, there's absolutely no problem with that at all. So I'm just using the clay tubes here to pave down some areas and add a little volume in other areas and then I'll come back in afterwards and tame it using the the 404 flatten brush. This really is a major component of my organic sculpting workflow. And one of the things that you run into pretty routinely is uh, that if you have different views of something, it might not line up perfectly. So you have to use your best judgment. Like the guy's thumb was in a slightly different position for each photo. So I'm starting to add in these wrinkles here, and I'm not I'm not going to be married to them, and if it turns out they're in the wrong place or whatever, I'll just pave them over. So it's very important to remember that the fingers are actually not tubes. They're pretty complicated. They have bones and muscle and tendons. Maybe not a huge amount of muscle, but they're not, you know, parallel formless tubes, that's for sure. So I mentioned this earlier, but I just want to reiterate, you notice how nothing's getting more finished than anything else. It's a really good idea to try to keep it as consistent as possible. adjustment to the index finger size there. So I've isolated the index finger here by holding control and shift and clicking on it 
because it's, uh, it's all one poly group because it all comes from one source Z sphere. Makes it pretty easy to do this. So just add the volume with clay tubes and then flatten 404 to smooth it out. I would not recommend using the smooth brush unless you really need it. The smooth brush is like throwing your rock into the river. It just it just paves everything down uh, and erodes all of your subtle little detail. Whereas flatten will uh, leave you know a, a lot of stuff on the surface. It's very subtle, but it helps it feel a little bit more organic, and it helps to preserve your form rather than just eroding it away. So only really use smooth. Uh, when when you need something to be smoothed, not when you need something to be flattened or made more regular. So still making great big adjustments to the form here and doing that at a low subdivision level. So when you use the transpose tool, make sure you only have a little bit of the geometry unmasked, otherwise you'll mess with the entire mesh. Let's just happen there for a brief moment. So now I've moved the thumb around, I need to kind of reposition the planes and the angles here. Thumbs tend to give uh, my students a lot of trouble. I'm not sure why, but... I think it's because they, they have kind of a strange planar relationship to the hand. So again, kind of starting to eyeball some of these folds in. You can hopefully see how massively irrelevant it would have been to throw knuckles and stuff into the Z-sphere mesh. I mean, if you can remember what it looks like, it's just this ridiculous splayed thing. And how different it looks now and how, how much I've needed to move things around and tweak and reposition. So you really want to keep your Z-sphere your base mesh as simple as possible. You're just looking for the pure source geometry that you can then modify heavily at the sculpting phase. So damn standard is great for these little these little cracks and folds. And I'm holding alt for those upstrokes there. And if you do that and then kind of come in and soften it either via smooth brush or the flatten brush, you can get a, a pretty nice uh wrinkle or vein or you know, that kind of a feature. Get the same thing with uh, standard brush, but it's just a little bit, a little bit harder to get those nice fall offs. And for this demo, 
I'm using the starting material, which is this, which is this red clay here. It's not my favorite uh, material to model in. In fact, I almost never use it. It's uh, I've got uh, some some materials that I picked up along the way that are I think a little bit better. Some materials are better for rendering. Some materials are better for sculpting. Um, this one's okay. I mean, it's all right. I wouldn't recommend posting too much work using the red clay because it's it's kind of it's kind of standard issue you know it's and it's it's uh, it, it indicates that I don't know maybe you haven't done enough exploration in the into the world of materials if you're using the the first one that they give you when I first started using ZBrush I, I did an entire model using just the standard brush because it was like so many I had no idea what any of them did and I was a little bit intimidated by it so, I mean, it's perfectly fine if you're just getting started. Red material is great. If you want to do something that's that's uh, a little bit more skin looking, you can grab that one at the bottom of the stack there. Uh, and there's also, you know, if you just go to uh, resources like ZBrush Central or Bad King, uh, they've got lots and lots of different materials that you can find. Some of them are pretty good. So I'm kind of beginning to block in where I want the fingernails to go. But it's really it's a little bit too early, but I'm not I'm not going to take this model too much farther, so I kind of just wanted to you know, hint at where that stuff was going to go. I spent about from start to finish maybe about an hour or an hour and a half on this I would expect a beginner to spend closer to four hours uh, on the first one and in my class what I uh, make my students do is is we sculpt one hand in class and it's a four hour session and then and about probably half that is like the z-sphere setup and then for homework for that week they sculpt that same hand but the other side so they basically just flip the reference like uh, um, ask you to do with the, the ear if you've gone to my website and then I'll usually make them do another hand or two because it's just like there's a ton of core skills that you need to develop to really kind of get the hang of it and then after you know some students will pick it up quicker than others uh, most people get their head around it without you know too much time going by but feel free to just crank out a few hands. Go find some different resource. Most people have phones. I mean, have cameras on their phones. You just take pictures of your own hand. Take pictures of your friend's hands. And having a having a good hand or two in your portfolio goes a long way towards selling your capacity as an artist. Hands are pretty tricky. In order to do one, you sort of have to have your head around all of these different brushes and the um, process of creating a base mesh in, in ZBrush. And you can obviously do it in, in a different program, but if you could say you did the whole thing in, in ZBrush, it, it demonstrates a uh, important skill set. So this is the damn standard, and I'm just coming in using the smooth brush to make it a little more subtle. So the reason it's a little early for this stuff is because there's still all kinds of uh, smoothing that needs to happen on the surface and resolution, and, and you don't want to be in a situation where you're going to be like adding bigger detail on top of smaller detail because the smaller detail is going to it's going to just need to be redone. Obviously, it's not the end of the world if uh, you want to kind of just throw that stuff in, but just be sure you don't stop sculpting that area because you absolutely fell in love with the little wrinkle that you put there. You don't want to mess it up. That's bad. You got to make sure that you are the boss of your model, not the other way around.
So I could easily do another uh, another 15 minute. I mean, it would it'd be probably a half hour for me, but another 15 minute video polishing this thing even further, and it would I think it would look um, it would look better. But for the sake of this tutorial, hopefully this is enough. Uh, to give you the, the the gist. If there's a big demand, let me know and I can make another video, but I'll be talking about some of the finer detailing techniques a little bit down the road. Um, so for now we're getting pretty close here to the end of this and uh, I think what we're going to do next is create a low poly mesh using retopology and we're also going to look at a, a technique called Z remesher, which is just a, a, a much faster but slightly less accurate, depending on the application way of making a low poly mesh. So just to do a little show and tell here, I'm going to uh, drop one of these hands to the canvas and position another one here. So if you're, you know, setting up a portfolio shot, this might be a way to do it. Got your reference and your models.